Hi everyone, my name is Paul Kirby. In this video, we are going to focus on charging electric vehicles. How do I do it? Where do I do it? How much would it cost and how long is it going to take? In my day-to-day -day role as head of electric vehicles for Vanarama, I hear the concerns that people have over charging electric vehicles. Hopefully the next few minutes will help you feel more comfortable with, the, with charging and the charging infrastructure and how it would work for you. And also how it would help you consider the changes that you might need to make whilst going for an electric vehicle, be that at home or on your journeys or back at the office or depot. So before we look at the process of charging, wherever it may be, let's have a look at the cost. The reality is currently that the cost of charging, depending on both where and when you do it, can vary wildly. So if we were at school right now, I'd be telling you to pay attention. Many of the charge points in the public domain require an app or a membership or an RFID card to work. There is a big move towards contactless payment but even so, having a membership or an app will often reduce the cost. As you have heard, the average cost of a kilowatt of energy at home or at work is around 14 or 15p a kilowatt. Out here in the public domain, the cost can vary from free, yeah, actually free, all the way up to over 60p per kilowatt. Typically though, the market seems to be averaging out at around 25p a kilowatt. This means it could be easily as much as double the cost of charging at home or in the workplace. But even with the varying costs, it is still considerably cheaper than diesel. The Maxxis e Deliver range are fully electric, so rely on you charging them each day to ensure that you have the mileage in the batteries that you need. It's always good to think about which battery size you need while you're at it so that you get the best value solution for you. If your operation is urban, you may not need the biggest battery, so it will save you money while still doing the job you need it to. A smaller battery is also quicker to charge. It's all about being fit for purpose. Now, charging can take place at your home, on your drive, or at your depot and workplace, or in one of the many public charge points that are available in hubs like this. Charging can also take place while you're driving through the process of regen, short for regeneration, which is the process where the vehicle, when you take your foot off the accelerator, uses the motors to generate power back into the battery. There are three main types of charging, slow, fast and rapid, and there's also another one creeping in called ultra rapid, but these relate to how quickly you can charge the vehicle. Slow is your domestic three pin plug and this charges at around 2.2 kilowatts an hour. And what that means is it will take about 24 hours to charge a 51 kilowatt hour battery. It's more of a get you out of trouble rather than a sensible option for a van. A home wall box will usually charge at about 7.4 kilowatts an hour, significantly reducing the time it takes to around seven hours for the same battery size. Simply divide the size of the battery by the speed of your charging and you will find out how long it takes. Rapid or ultra rapid charges much more quickly due to using direct current or DC charging. The Maxxis vehicles will get charged from 20 to 80% in around 45 minutes at one of these charge points. Charging can seem complicated or difficult, but in this video we will show you how simple it can be. Also, we will help you navigate the bits that you need to know before you tackle charging in the public domain. What's clear is that the vehicles spend much of their time stationary. Taking advantage of this time is critical to making the best use of electric vehicles. Often where you have off-road parking at a driver's home, the best place to charge is at home. First of all, let's consider the two types of cable that you get with the vehicle. So you get what you call your three pin plug or your granny plug, um, which you can plug into your domestic plug through the window of your house if you don't have a charge point fitted. So the other type of cable that's provided is a type two cable. This is the type of cable that fits in your home wall box, which usually are on the outside of the front of the house. Typically you need a specialist technician to get one of these fitted. It's a very simple process and you open up the front of the vehicle, uncover the port and plug it in. Now in my case I need to simply press a button on my charge point. A handshake sort of takes place between the charge point and the vehicle 
and then the vehicle kicks into life. Home charging is the easiest of the three types of charging. You fill your vehicle with energy while you eat, sleep and rest. And the best thing about all of this is that in the morning you unplug, shut the front of the vehicle and away you go with your full 150 mile range which is more than adequate for most people's daily mileage needs. It doesn't get any easier than that. So the other alternative is to be charging at the workplace, the place where your vans park in the daytime, overnight, and if you have the right charging infrastructure, you can get fast charging or rapid charging, which will give you a boost to get the vehicles back out on the road through the day, or go with a seven kilowatt or a 22 kilowatt charger, which will allow the vehicles to charge adequately overnight, enabling your drivers to start every day with a full charge. The good news is that there are grants available to help you get charge points fitted and they are worth around £350 today as we speak but time will change that no doubt so best to strike while the iron's hot. But if we do finally get low enough to need a boost on the hoof then let's consider what the infrastructure for public charging looks like in the UK. According to ZapMap, there are nearly 14,000 locations with 22,000 devices available for you and me to charge our electric vehicles. And the app will tell you whether the device is in use, whether it's working or not, and, and also how much it will cost you to charge. It's a fantastic app and it keeps things nice and simple. The government have also recognised that charging infrastructure is a barrier and a concern to us. So that's why they're investing over £1.3 billion to ensure that the right infrastructure is there for us when we need it. So how does it work? Well, we had a look on a day not so nice as this one. So once you're at the front of the vehicle where the charge point is and by the charger of your choice, we select whether we're a guest or a member, but it'll give you an opportunity to start. And that is my start point. I add my tag. I now select whichever charging point I want for the Maxus, we want to select the 50 kilowatt DC CCS and you can see the shape of it will match the socket which we'll see in a second. Now it tells me to connect my vehicle so I'm going to go and plug in. So then present the charging socket into the vehicle. The charger will then go through a series of checks. We'll see the vehicle starting to charge. So you'll know the vehicle is charging because of the green flashing light. So most charging points that you arrive at will have a screen not dissimilar to this one. The Maxus eDeliver 9 and the eDeliver 3 will both deliver from 20 to 80% in around 45 minutes. Over 80%, the batteries don't charge as fast as they have to slow the intake of energy for various sciency and technical reasons. What we need to know is at the magic number, we may as well get on with our day as the speed of charging will slow dramatically. Which reminds me, time for me to get going. By 2030, every vehicle sold will have a plug on it and charging will be completely normal. So if you were concerned about charging, hopefully now you have the confidence to get started on your electric journey. See you soon.